sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Welcome to the Revelation 13 Podcast. Revelation 13 Podcast presents Breaking News. Hello and welcome to the Revelation 13 Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Hopwood. Peace negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians have resumed again, although expectations are generally low that any meaningful agreement will come out of it. Obama, like many U.S. presidents before him, is rolling the dice that some sort of peace agreement might be made. Obama has stated that he wants a, an agreement within a year. He's probably hoping that a breakthrough in the Middle East could help his chances for re-election to the presidency in 2012. Interestingly enough, if this is some sort of agreement, if there is some sort of agreement made and Obama has a role in it, this would further fuel speculation by some that he is the Antichrist. At this point, Obama is more of a Jimmy Carter than an Antichrist. Before the negotiations began, it was reported that Israel has agreed to give away parts of Jerusalem and the West Bank for a Palestinian state, and that a special regime would govern the holy sites. Although there have been hints that the Jews, then there also have been hints that the Jews who stay in the West Bank may wind up living under Palestinian authority. This may be a way for Israel, the Israeli government, to circumvent the painful speculation it had when it forcefully removed Jews from their homes when they withdrew from the Gaza Strip. This policy, if enforced, could eventually lead to the events Jesus predicted for the last days when he warned those who, li- those living in Judea, which is now the West Bank, that when they saw the abomination of desolation as spoken of by the prophet Daniel, that those who are in Judea should flee. It is believed that the abomination of desolation would be the Antichrist in a new Jewish temple or somewhere on the Temple Mount, stopping the Jewish sacrifices to God. He may do this by desecrating the sacrificial altar, by setting up an idol, or making uh, making the altar unclean by sacrificing an unclean animal like a pig on it. This was done by Antiochus Epiphanes when he exerted his control over Jerusalem in 167 B.C. Jews living in the West Bank may have to choose between leaving their homes or living with the people who might turn on them and attempt to kill them. If no peace agreement is made, the next probable conflict will come from one of two fronts. Either Iran's nuclear facilities will be attacked in an attempt to keep them from making nuclear weapons, or Hezbollah in Lebanon steps up attacks on Israel, creating another Israeli-Hezbollah war. The summer of 2006 saw the first major clash between these groups. Hezbollah rocket attacks against northern Israel and the kidnapping of Israeli soldiers prompted the war. Unfortunately, it did not go as well as other Israeli military operations. They attempted to win by using a George Bush strategy of just trying to surgically bomb your way to victory. They seemed to bow to the U.S. Politi- they seemed to bow to U.S. political pressure and didn't attack a Hezbollah with all their, all their might and all their resources. Even when they later sent in ground troops and used more force into Lebanon, they didn't succeed in achieving their goals, uh, the goals of the operation, which was to stop the rocket attacks in nor- on northern Israel and rescue the kidnapped soldiers. And when the hostilities stopped, Israel looked weak in the eyes of their enemies, and, in the, and their military uh, machine no longer looked invincible. Syria and Iran have been helping the group rearm for the next conflict. Hezbollah and Hamas have basically been offshoots of the Syrian and and Iranian military, and they usually take their orders from them. Israel realizes that in the next major military action, it must crush the enemy decisively. Israeli forces believe that the aura of of an invincible army have deterred major conflicts since the 1973 Yom Kippur War. Since then, they have mainly been dealing with offshoot terrorist groups such as Palestinian, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, Hamas, and Hezbollah. 
but if the surrounding countries around Israel feel that they can defeat them, Israel may face an enemy force like it did in the Six Day War when virtually every country around Israel sent armies to attack them. Brigadier General Yal Eisenberg has stated that the Israeli Defense Forces have noticed a number of attempts by terrorist groups on Israeli soldiers with an emphasis on capture. In the Gaza Strip they have found smuggling tunnels being built that were going to be used to transport kidnapped Israeli soldiers. As, as the peace talks go on, Hamas and others may step up their attacks to derail the peace process. In any given year, Israel absorbs a lot of terrorist attacks. This year alone in the Gaza Strip they have had a hundred incidents on the border fence, killed 30 terrorists, found 60 locations where explosives were planted, and had 350 rockets fired into Israel. These incidents are only a tenth of what Israel had faced prior to Operation Cast Lead. In the two years since the operation, since the operation had started, the increased military pressure on radical elements of Hamas has greatly reduced the number of incidents Israel has suffered. At some point, Israel may be hit by an attack they can't ignore, and this may launch the next major Mideast war. U.S. military analysts believe that the next conflict Israel has with Hezbollah will be, will be nastier than the last one. Hezbollah's most likely group is the, Hezbollah is the most likely group to attack Israel, and this time the conflict most likely uh, could draw in Iran and Syria to the fight. BP has recently declared that the Manconda well has been permanently shut down and is no longer a threat to the Gulf of Mexico and, the, and to the surrounding states in the area. On April 20, 2010, methane gas escaping from the well broke through the Deepwater Horizon rig's seals and ignited. The explosion destroyed the oil rig and killed 11 men. The well then started leaking oil into the Gulf. The well sits nearly a mile down on the ocean floor, and this made containing the well very difficult. For nearly five months, the well, spilling oil, the well was spilling oil into the ocean, making it the worst oil spill in U.S. history. Five million barrels of oil gushed out of the well. The oil contaminated nearly 700 miles of coastline, invading Louisiana's marshlands and depositing tar balls on Florida beaches. Thousands of birds were also impacted as they became covered in crude oil. The fishing industry in the Gulf took a major hit. Federal authorities had to close federal, uh, the federal waters to fishing for the duration of the leak. B BP stopped the, the leak by placing a cap on the well. Getting a cap that actually worked took several tries. After they successfully stopped the leak, they decided to kill the well, and they have permanently shut it down by pumping mud and cement into, into it through a relief well. Uh, to seal it. The U.S. government released a report in August that stated nearly 75 percent of the spill had been removed from the Gulf or was rapidly being broken down by bacteria. Some scientists dispute that claim, believing that the rate of biological breakdown of the oil has been exaggerated. Also, scientists from the Woods Hale Oceanographic